So the point that I'm getting at is um, it's it, we just kept on until finally um, we got through, and we have to give God the glory for this. So whenever you've got an obstacle, a spiritual obstacle in your pathway, you have to press through. A lot of people just give up, and they just say, well, that didn't work. Well, you see, it's if you've got a very powerful obstacle coming against you, sometimes you have to press harder, and uh, you just you just don't give up. And uh, so uh, sometimes your warfare is uh, probably bigger than what you have ever experienced before. If you don't get through, uh, call a prayer warrior to pray for you and with you and keep on pressing because Jesus is not a failure. Sometimes our faith is what fails. It's not his faith that fails. It's ours. So you learned a lesson a couple of times up here with us that we just keep on until finally we get through. And so we give God the glory. So binding the strong man, um, it's true, absolutely true, that Jesus Christ led left fearful, uh, uh, fearsome spiritual power to his church. And see, when we're having problems like we had tonight, uh, we are trying to do the warfare at the same time, we're trying to do the, the the mechanics of this show. And the mechanics of this show, for me, is much, much harder than the spiritual warfare. But uh, Sabrina and I are both uh, pushing through. So whenever things happen like that, you chime in and you start doing spiritual warfare and binding also. I know that Brother Marshall is probably binding. Now, what she had to do is she had to knock the show off of the air and reschedule a new show. So I'm not real sure that the people over on um, uh, Facebook uh, would uh, know how to get in. So uh, maybe Nicole can go over and put it up on uh, Supernatural and on the news page for us, uh, the link, and tell them to come on up. So we have power, and now, just like us, you have to learn to use it. And so in Matthew 28, 18, 20, the Bible says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given to me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. I am low with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. So he's made a very powerful statement here, and he's telling you that when you put your faith and your trust in him, that he actually has all the power, that the devil does not have the power that you want to give him sometimes. Sometimes the devil has power because you give him the power by having faith that he can do things that he's not supposed to be able to do. And so the way you get around that is you do it through studying spiritual warfare. You study also uh, deliverance. Go back over and recast some of the deliverance tapes that we've done. You study uh, things that we've done on victory. Uh, All kinds of teachings up there for you to get your faith built up. And if you're doing something and it isn't working, stop doing it. That means that you're just batting in the air. It doesn't work. You have to do it 
God's way for it to work. Amen? And so um, the Lord asked this insightful question. He said, or else, how can one enter into a strong man's house, spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man? And then he will spoil his goods. Now, this scripture you'll find in Matthew twelve twenty nine. How can one enter a strong man's house and spoil his goods except first you bind the strong man? First you bind the strong man in spiritual warfare. And this is why you hear us say when we begin to pray for you, we will say, Satan, we take authority over you and we bind your powers. We command you to take your hands off of this person in Jesus' name. We cage you and all of your demonic forces. Now, what you're doing is you're arresting the spirits and you're binding the powers of Satan when you do that. Now, once you get the powers of Satan bound, then and only then can you rob his house. Now, what are you robbing his house of? You're taking the spirits that are implanted in your tabernacle, you're binding them up, and you're telling them to get out in Jesus' name. And, of course, they have to obey the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is the only thing that a devil has to bow, uh, bow to. The only thing, only name in the universe is Jesus. And so that's why we use Jesus. And Jesus has worked for me for more than 35 years, and he'll certainly work for you. Now, the King James Version says, bind the strong man in Matthew 12:29. Indeed, binding the strong man is the very first principle, as I just explained. Before any warfare opposing the powers, principalities, wicked rulers, evil spirits can be released, bound or, or, or released, they have to be bound. You put them in the cage. And then you're able to release your prayer that you're praying. If you're praying for the nation, uh, you say, Satan, I bind your powers over the nation in Jesus' name. Now, I tell you that you're not supposed to go in territorial spirit to warfare unless you're in a group. Mm -hmm. Because you're not as strong as you think you are. So don't go trying to bind the spirits over the nation and the city and all of those things. We can do it, but we always do it in a group because we need the authority and the power of agreement so that one can chase a thousand, two can chase two, ten. So don't go trying to do this kind of uh, warfare for the nations and the cities. You can pray for yourself and your family. You can pray for individuals. And when you bind the strong man over what's what's going on in that situation, according to Matthew 18, 18, 19, and 20, then Jesus told us we could enter his house. And so um, the strong man is what? The strong man is the devil, and then it can be the powers and the principalities that operate over a city. And then a strong man over a person's life can be a ruler over that person's life that's uh, enslaving that person and allowing that person and driving that person to uh, go and drink or to watch pornography or or to smoke cigarettes or whatever it is. 
And so in those situations, what you need to do is you bind the powers and the principalities over that person's life, over the house where that person is and where you're praying, uh, and then you bind, you take authority over the powers, principalities, rulers of darkness and wicked spirits, and you bind those. Now, I hope that I'm making this simple. I'm trying to. In Matthew 18, 18, and 19, and 20, the Bible says, Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say unto you, If any, if any of you shall agree on earth as touching anything they shall ask, it shall be done for them by my Father, which is in heaven. For where there are two or three gathered in my name, in my name. I am in the midst of them. And so you see, Christianity is far more simple than what a lot of people would want you to believe. Because Christianity was written for the poor working classes of the of the apostles' day. They wrote it uh they wrote it in Greek the Bible, but it was written in the Greek that the masses spoke. It was not written in the Greek that the uh, colleges taught. And so it's called Cornea Greek. And so God wanted the simplest minded person to be able to understand the word of God. And so now I hope that you got it. It says, indeed, binding the strong man is the first principle of spiritual warfare. So again, before any warfare, opposing powers, principalities, wicked uh, rulers, and evil spirits can be released can be won and released by the power of the name of Jesus. Now, you've got a wizard, a witch, or a group of people working against you. What you have to understand is this. Those people have absolutely no spiritual power unless they get it from Satan. They have no power unless it's being motivated by the powers, the wicked spirits and the rulers in high places, uh, the God of the air, which is Satan, and they can also rule from the principalities, powers from the sea and underground. So the way we used to do it when we were having um, prayer meetings at the church we would bind the powers and the principalities over the city, over the church. We would bind the powers of the air, the principalities of the airways, and then we would bind the principalities, the underground principalities. And that way, all of the supernatural powers of the enemy would be bound. And... Then we would bind any powers of that have come into the meeting from any individual person. Because sometimes, particularly in today's world, witches and wizards will try to infiltrate churches. So that way you've got it all bound up. You've got the heavenly uh, principalities bound. You've got the powers of the air bound. You've got the powers of the sea bound. You've got the powers of the underworld bound. And if there's any 
body in the church that's trying to react with powers, you've got them bound. Now, what does that mean? That means that the human beings that are relying on those powers to attack you or to come at you or to throw curses at you, that means that they physically and spiritually have no powers. They can do nothing apart from their leader, Satan, and his army. So just because you were connected to a big, powerful group of uh, wizards and witches and things like that, and you keep thinking that they're working powers against you, and we keep binding them up, the only reason why they can come back at you is because you're giving powers to reinforcing devils by believing that the powers of God isn't working for you. It's called unbelief, and it's called doubt. And and it also can be you believing something that isn't true. You're believing a lie from the other camp. Instead of pushing in and believing Jesus. You see, when you want something desperately for the Lord, sometimes you just have to push in. Dr. Sabrina has been out on a long fast again. And she was pushing in for certain things for herself. She never told me what it was. She was talking to Jesus about it. She wasn't resisting the devil as far as I bind you every day. She was on a fast seeking the presence of God. And what happens when you do that? The Bible in Isaiah 58 says that fasting breaks the yoke of the evil one. So that's part of your spiritual warfare Just like we taught, I'm going to teach on fasting too. Mm -hmm. Just like we taught recently on praise and worship, that's part of your warfare. Because, see, once you disconnect from Satan, you're supposed to totally disconnect. You're supposed to clean your mind every time something of that group or, or whatever you were doing comes into your mind. You drive it out with praise and worship, and you just... Uh, uh, get your mind on Jesus instead of that. It's over. It's done with. Disconnect yourself. Stop giving the devil power by even thinking about it. And push those thoughts out of your mind. And so she fasted and fasted for, I guess, seems to me a good three or four weeks she was fasting. And... um, In church Sunday, she got ministry, and she got breakthrough, personal breakthrough, things that she's been standing against for a long time. Mm -hmm. And she got some freedom in addition to uh, breaking through on some promises that the Lord had given to her. Mm -hmm. And uh, she did that because, you see, when you get in the ministry, God makes you come to his throne more than you can go to the phone of someone else or you can share personally with someone else because you're a minister and you have to know that God will do things for you just like he does things for other people. And so uh, you learn that as you walk with Jesus. Well, you got to get on a fast. you got to have a breakthrough. You're praying. You're doing everything you know to do, but it didn't happen. Maybe that just means that God wants to spend some time with you. Maybe that means you just need to get, get your breakthrough and praise and worship and getting close to Jesus. He wants to fellowship with you because he can do it the minute you ask, the second you ask. But... He's given us little outlines in the Bible where we do have to go for the breakthroughs ourselves, and particularly if you're a minister. Now, I'm going to tell you, if you want to be a deliverance minister, 
You cannot be a deliverance minister and not fast. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to tell you right up front. You cannot do it. And the reason is, is because fasting breaks the yoke. And Jesus told us, some of these devils come out with fasting. Isn't that what it says, that Dr. Sabrina? Jesus so, come forth by prayer and fast. Prayer and fasting. Now, that's not in the NIV Bible because they took that scripture out. A lot of them they took out. So you've got to you've got to fast because fasting breaks you through into the spiritual realm. Not only does it break the yoke, but it also breaks you in through the spiritual realms so that you can hear God, so that you can hear him better and clearer in his directions in your life. So don't think you can just swirl around and think you're going to do things in deliverance ministry and not fast, it is not going to work. Now, Satan is not going to allow anyone to destroy his enslaving influence without putting up a very strong opposition, according to Matthew 12, 22 to 33. His dominating power must be deactivated before a Christian can release the devil's uh, uh, caged victims. Now, I want you to pay attention to that. We've done some teaching on caging the devils, and we've also done some teaching on the devil casing, uh, caging humans. Wizards, warlocks, witches, they cage humans also through the inspiration and powers of devils. Now, when a human is caged, what happens is nothing goes right for them. They, they're they like in a bird's cage. And if you've ever seen a bird, a bird walks the diameter of the bird cage around and around and he crisscrosses, but he's very limited about what he can do. <clears throat> He can cry for food, he can chirp, he can sing if he wants to, uh, but he's not free, and he's under the powers of some other person. And so a human can be in a cage, uh, being caged by a wizard, witch, or whatever. But when you come into deliverance, and a deliverance minister says, I break the bird cage, or I break the cage, and I command you to be free, God takes his big fist and breaks the door of the cage and brings you out. You're free. You may not know how to use your freedom yet, but you're free from that. Now, what happens is if a person a witch or a wizard has put Christians uh, in a bird uh, in a cage. What we do is we cage him, and he cannot get out. The devil is not strong enough to break any cage that a Christian has has put uh, a wizard or a witch in. And what we're doing when we do that is we're denying him freedom of power to work evil powers against the body of Christ, and we're denying him powers to work for Satan, period, because he's limited when he's caged. Demons, whenever we cage demons, demons don't like to be in a cage. And uh, sometimes people will come in and they'll be in sin And we will pray and cage the demons, but we don't cast them out. We just cage the demons. Well, what good does that do, Sister Pat? Well, what it does is it takes power away from the demons uh, so that they can't drive the humans. And then the humans 
have their flesh to contend with, mm-hmm. and they have also God to contend with. And uh, that's when God begins to put pressure on them to call them into the kingdom. And once they come into the kingdom, then you can set the captives free. Amen? So this caging has a lot of things that you can recast. I think we've done two or three teachings on it. But it's a most powerful spiritual weapon is binding and caging the strong man. You bind him and then you arrest him. You take his powers away through binding him and then you arrest him and put him in the cage. And uh, you take his power and you bind the strong man, you cage the strong man, according to Matthew 18, 18, 19, 20. Now, binding and loosening, binding and loosening is one of the primary things that new Christians need to learn. You're not going to learn everything in one or two teachings. And nobody expects you to know everything. We expect that when you get in trouble, that you call Blog Talk Radio and you say, here I am again, guys. I need help. Nobody thinks anything about that because we've all been through it ourselves. Do you think that we got free with one deliverance? No. No. It takes deliverance plus teaching. Now, here's what happens. A lot of times, people need a lot of deliverance, and they need an awful lot of teaching. And so what they do is they'll come up here to Dr. Holliday and Dr. Sabrina and Marshall, and they'll uh, they'll say, I need deliverance, and we begin a deliverance on them, And we tell them very specifically what to do. And what we tell them is we tell them to turn the Word of God on and play it over themselves in their house at night. And then what we do, we tell them very specifically to to recast the program so that they can hear it again and they can hear their own deliverance. And when they do that, they'll even get more deliverance, by the way. And then we tell them to read the Bible and to uh, do the worship, to do the praise. Uh, All of these things that we're teaching you are things that you will eventually incorporate into your lifestyle as a Christian. But here's what happens to us. They come up one time and they say, I need deliverance. 